Hi, Mal, ladies. This is Prem. Um, I don't know. I need to do better as far as videos are concerned, but to be honest, y'all, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So, you know, bear with me as I get this, you know, on track. Is that like I like to do at least one YouTube video a week and make a blog a week, which I've not done, but I'm going to, I'm going to get better at it, first of all, and second of all, I'm trying to figure out how to, um, you know, create on YouTube, like, um, videos, because I'm using my phone to record my voice and then adding it to a video, um, so I'm trying to figure out the best way for me to figure out how to make videos, um, on YouTube, but anyway, um, finally, I'm here with, um, um, the commentary for A Moment Alone, Divest. Um, which is a blog I made on the 11th, I think. Um, and I think that now is quite timely, and I'm happy that I waited because, you know, things are going on right now that I wanted to discuss. Um, so, first of all, for those of us who do not know what divesting is, I'm going to um, give you my personal um definition of divesting and I'm going to tell you what's happening as as black women are beginning to divest. So, um first of all, most black no, let me take that back. When we hear divesting, the first thing that we think about is dating, right? Um and starting to choose better, right? And our dating options, opening up our dating options, um, as far as race um is concerned. And really basically just getting away from black males. Um, but divesting really is just getting away from and anything that is harmful to black women and no longer giving it your power. That includes, um, of course, our dating options. But that also includes leaving our friends and our family and um you know, uh, our community or the, or the black community behind, black is staying behind, because it in itself is just harmful to black women. Um, the black community is not a safe space for black women. So ultimately, we have to leave. We have to go. Um, it's just not safe for us here anymore, and we need to admit that, um, we need to be honest about um what's going on in the black community and how it is um harmful to black women um, let me see here I wanted to pause So, basically, back to divesting and the definition of divesting. Divesting is to take back our power from anything or community or persons that is using us to mule or many or just not being um, beneficial to our good, right? I believe in divesting and my own divesting because I am currently divesting and, you know, I'm, I'm sharing that journey with you guys. But, um, <sighs> the hardest part for me divesting is the mammies and the picnies. Um, because, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a black woman. I've been raised by black women and most older black women are mammies. And, you know, um, some of my friends are picnics and coming to the realization of just how dangerous they are to me and my livelihood is quite hurtful. It's quite hurtful. Um, so I think for the most part, that is going to be the biggest. Tr for those of us who have already decided that black men were trash, right? So we already decided that black men are, are trash and we're just not doing that with our life. Um <laughs> So, um, for that matter, then that only leaves, like, our friends and our families and the women that we know um, and that we have connected with and that we love and we don't want to, and then leaving them in these, you know, in this harmful community that is Blackistan, leaving them here, 
Um, cause after you start, once, once you begin to divest and you begin to realize, you know, your eyes are open, you know, we always know that the black community is just like, you know, you know, as, um, it's just not a safe place for black women and girls and children. Cause, you know, we're going to give black boys the benefit of the doubt till up to like 14, right? We're going to be... <laughs> We gonna be fair. I mean, I'm saying honestly, I believe that between the ages of 11 and 14, black boys um, either either a very very small amount of them become, you know, um, only a very small amount of them between their ages become don't become terrorists. But between the ages of 11 and 14, that's about when black little boys turn into black male terrorists, um, in my opinion. You know, I know, I know black women here with sons, and you don't want to hear that, but about, about 14 years old, your sons are in school terrorizing black girls. I mean, really, about 14, 14 when my daughter went to high school, I made sure that my daughter went to an all-girls high school. Because I knew that your sons were going to be out there terrorizing, <laughs> terrorizing black girls, and I wanted my daughter to have no parts of that. But you know, about fourteen, between middle school, your sons are turning into terrorists, and it's no, it's no way around that. You know, that's what's happening. Um, so um, you know, most of us know that. Like we, we have a, we, we kind of know that even at a, a subconscious level, because. You know, we've probably been violated as girls anyway, but, you know, we just know that black males is just not where it's at, and then you don't want to let go of your friends, and then you try to warn your friends once you wake up, and you try to tell them, like, you know, you start telling them, you start planting little seeds, like, look, I'm basically, I'm about to be out of here, like, I don't, you know, you start saying things like, I don't date black men anymore. Like, that's not that's not my preference anymore. I don't want to date black males anymore. And, you know, you'll see, you know, where your friends are headed because some are going to agree. Some are going to be like, girl, yes. <laughs> girl, yes. What's the plan? <laughs> like, now what do we do? Because it's like, because we've been trained all our lives to, like, date black men only. So once you say you don't date black men, it's like now what? And you know, it was, it got it get crazy after you decide like, you know what, black men not really what I want no more. It get crazy. Then you start moving on, especially if you're a bisexual woman, you're like, wait a minute, do I wanna be gay now? Like, wait, am I gay? And then you realize, oh no, I'm not gay, I just don't like these males. <laughs> I just don't like black men anymore. And you start sharing these, you know, situations with your friends and your girlfriends and your homegirls. And those of those of us who are willing to hear what you have to say, we start listening. We start jumping in like, yeah, this is really not it. And then, you know, some of your dearest friends are going to be like, no, I'm not willing to, you know, separate with, you know, black team for for my own safety. And those friends, you have got to let go. Okay. And we're going to talk about pick me's and mammies and how, you know, dangerous they are eventually. But just know that they are, they do become dangerous. Keeping those kind of friends around, um, keeping those kind of women around, raising your daughters around those, raising your children around those kind of women and having them put a hand in raising your children, dangerous as fuck. Okay? Dangerous as fuck. And I think that that is the hardest thing that we do once it's time to divest. Like, we could even move. It's time to go. But letting go of those friendships and those um, relationships or the, the false, you know, sisterhood in Blackistan, it's, it's hard. It's hard because we all seeking, we're all seeking, you know, true connections with women and sisterhood. But that's not it. And I think that is the, um, the, the hardest part of, um, you know, divesting. Um, as I said, I'm recording my phone, so that was just a message on my phone. But um, anyhow, let's get into this blog, right? I just wanted to give us a, a, a definition of divesting. But let's get into this blog and let's get into this picture because the picture, right? The picture, and I hope that I can, like, figure out how to put this picture in the video. But... <laughs> We gonna see. We gonna see. Actually, I'm gonna hope that a friend can do it for me because I really don't know what I'm doing. 
But anyway, in this picture that is on this blog, it is a uh, white female, you know, trying to beat up a black woman. And, you know, it's a crowd of people all around her. And, um, you know, she's at, like, she's, what happens is I included the, the, I included the link to what happened. So basically, a black woman, she's going home from work and, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter and gas black women up so much that we really, and we have really began to think like we want to smoke with everybody. Like, like we really have decided like we want to smoke with everybody. So here she is walking past the Trump rally or, um, whatever it is, you know, this, these proud boys or whatever, you know, and she's walking past them. And instead of her just minding her business and walking past, as I would have done, as most divested black women would have done, um, she decides to state her political views against these um, people, and they become violent with her. And they become violent with her. They start calling her the N-word. They start using racial slurs against her. You know, they just, you know, basic trash. You know, they stay trash. And, um, but what I wanted to point out was because, oh, right, because what black women know, what we have been trained to know is that white people ain't shit. And they are, a, you know, direct enemy to our livelihood, right? That's something that we know. We all know it. And, you know, I believe that it's a, it's a part of self-preservation self-preser- um, to understand, you know, what racism is and, and, you know, how it affects black women, you know. So, you know, we're not, we would expect this from white, we would expect this from white people. An intelligent, divested woman would, would expect that. Like, she would know, like, these people are going to become violent. Um but this woman didn't know that, right? She's, you know, she's a black woman. She's probably knee deep in Black Lives Matter. You know, she's probably willing to fight and die for her community. And she sees these white people talking about Trump and she decides to take her political views and they begin to become violent towards her and racist in their language towards her. And if you look less than, I mean, this guy could get to her in a, in a second, right? He, this black guy, right there, he could get to her in a second, and you know, stop this from happening, or at least you know, stand in the in the middle or stand in the thick of it with her. But he is able to understand and compartmentalize that this insult, these things that they are saying to her, has nothing to do with him. And black women would gain a world of good if we could do that. If we could learn how to sit and be in the spaces of white people and they are saying something about the black collective or they are saying something about black males and we are able to compartmentalize, okay, you know, maybe what they're saying, it, it's dang shit for saying it. You know, I feel a way about it. But it's not directed to me. And it's not in a thought of, oh, you know, black women are trash, but you not, Keisha. No, it's not that it's this thing, these these things that they might be saying about black people. If I'm in that space, if I'm in that atmosphere, then obviously I want to be in the atmosphere. I'm deciding that this is where I want to be. And let me not take it personal because that's exactly what this guy does. He's in this space with these mega people and these Trump supporters or whoever the, whoever they are, and he's deciding that I am going to decide to, he decides that I'm going to find my space with them over my race or my color with her, right? He's deciding that it is safer for me to decide to not choose my color in this instance and to just mind my business. And black women could do a world of good if we were able to do that. But even on top of that, let's let's just say, okay, let's just say, you know, all right, he decided that it's nothing. You know, it's you know, I'm not connected to her because of of, of race. But they begin to brutally beat her, right? They begin to hit her with these sticks or these poles that they have on this picture. They begin to brutally beat her, and he still does not. He still does nothing. This is inhumane. Right? This, this becomes a, 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 a question of humanity. You're seeing a woman get abused by a mob of people and you as a, a black man do nothing about it? 
nothing at all about it. As a matter of fact, this woman, um, I, I, I don't have the picture. I'm going to try. I can't make no promises, y'all. But um, this woman was actually, you know, this, this big-ass um, pro-Trump, bearded fucking he looks like uh you know everything you would say think when you when you think of a fucking pro-trump pill belly um he wraps his arms around her whispers in her ear stop fighting they're going to kill you and and gets her out of this situation there's a black man who's who can get to her in seconds as it begins then they begin to violently abuse her and become very violent with her hitting her with hit, pulling her wig off um hitting her with these sticks, and a white man, a white hillbilly, jumps in to protect her. And if I can share that picture in this video, I will. Um, but th that's what happened, okay? Um, this just goes to, um, this just goes to the point that black women do not have allies in the new coming America, Okay? We don't have a safe space in this new coming America as a collective. So you have to find your safety. You have to find your safety alone. You have to figure out how to to be safe alone in this in this kind of um uh atmosphere. Right? Oh, I have to stop it. So anyway, in the new coming America, um, black women are going to have to figure out how to find your safety um, individually. And, and I'm here for however you find it. I am here and I am in support of however you find it. I just want you to know where it's not, okay? <laughs> I just want to be crystal clear about where you will not find your safety or a safe place. Um, and, you know, for some of you here, it's going to hurt to hear this, but you do not find safety in the black community. You, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I'm willing to, I am going to say the most dangerous place for a black woman in the um, new coming, you know, America is uh, is the black community. That is the worst place to be at. And we all need to be working to get out of it, to get out of it, to become sovereign if you must live in it. If you must live in it, because all of us are not going to be able to have the socioeconomical uh, means to get out as quickly as we like, because we should all be working to get out. But some of us are not going to have the uh, socioeconomic means to get out of it right now, um, myself included. I'm currently working on how do I get out. Well, I'm not, you know... I'm, but this is my daughter's last year of um, high school, so I just cannot leave right now. I have to let her finish high school and then send her to college, and then I'm able to to get, get pack light. <laughs> you know, whenever I – okay, um, that's when I'll be able to get out of it. Um, I have made um, – I have said that black women need to, to, to end the past, and we'll touch on this, of course, black women and, you know, having children. Um, you know, fortunately, I packed light. You know, fortunately, I, I packed light. I had one child, um, and black is saying I had one child by a black male. You only, listen, listen, it takes me one time to learn a lesson, and I learned it fast. I learned this lesson at 14 years old. <laughs> I learned this lesson at 14 years old, so I packed light, and now I'm 33 years old, and my daughter is going away to college. Um, you know, her college is 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 paid for and and will be you know funded um so I don't have to worry about that and now because I've packed lightly, I can maneuver my way up out of out up out of Blackistan in a matter of once she goes to college in in you know August, I can be out of Blackistan by you know year's end 
and that is my plan. And every black woman needs to be making that plan. And if you are not making that plan because you can't because of your, your social economic um, placement and you can't get out of this space immediately, you need to um, figure out the safest way for you to exist in, 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 in Blackistan. Because um, – what would what just now happened with the young lady in New York? Um, I think it was I can't remember which borough it was, but anyway, she was in New York and she went inside of a bar. I know we have all heard this. She went inside of a bar to go and get a bottle of wine. Um, after leaving work, she had left work, busted her ass. A thirty one year old woman sounds so familiar. Um, a thirty one year old woman busted her ass. A single mom busting busting her ass. Um, went to a uh, a bar, a spirit store, like, I don't know what, I don't know what you call it where you live at, but around here we call it a liquor store. She went to the liquor store. <laughs> she went to the liquor store and, you know, to get her a bottle of wine, a guy, I mean, it's an insult to guys to even call this male a, a guy. So she, she's inside the liquor store and the guy, um, the male, offers to buy her her bottle of wine she declines you know and in the video you can see these guys swarming around her like they start to like circle her like a you know they start to circle her like a um like a pack of fucking wolves they they literally start to to circle it was just very watching the video to me it was just very animalistic it was very animalistic how they how their nature they started to circle her um, like a pack of wolves, she gets out of the store, she runs, she, she literally runs, she's not, she's not being aggressive, you know, they could take the wine, they could take a phone, they could take a pocketbook, you know, she's not being aggressive, if they really wanted that from her, they could have just took it from her, she wasn't, she wasn't fighting back, she, you can have this shit, right, that's something we all know in black is I'm not, never gonna die for my wallet, I'm never gonna die for my shoes, you know what I'm saying, like, like, if, if I'm, a, if I'm confronted in the city's in the city that I live in, you know, if somebody want my goddamn pocketbook, you can have it. My wallet, you can have it. If I, if I got a bottle of wine and you want that, you can have it. And I'm sure that that was the same way that she was, but that's not what they wanted. They wanted to attack her. They wanted to attack her. Their whole, the whole reason why they, they started, they started the bullshit with offering to buy her a bottle of wine was to attack her. And then someone, and then once they attack her, uh, one of these beasts, literally bit her they fucking mold her they begin to you know you can call me dramatic all you want they begin to try to eat her like fucking cannibals this guy tried to eat her fucking eye out of her socket eye socket it was fucking crazy and if you watch it and when you sit and watch it it is like a fucking attack from animals attacking a human being and I need for you to understand this is what defunding the police is going to look like in the inner cities. In the inner cities and these, these, you know, as I like to call them, Democrat, um, Democrat cities, these Democrat ran cities, black male terrorists run cities. This is what defunding the police is going to look like because this was not their first time attacking someone. They had attacked someone before like that and nothing happened. So then they did it again and this is exactly what defunding the police look like. And the mannies and the picnies inside of Blackistan are pushing for this. You see them marching in the Black Lives Matter. You see them standing up, having long, fucking, drawn-out speeches about why the police should be defunded in Black... In Blackistan? Are you fucking serious? Do you understand where that puts black women without police? Do you get where that... Where that what kind of situation that puts us in, in the next... I, I mean, I, it's happening now, so I can't even say in the next... In cities that had riots, in cities that had, you know, someone was killed, uh, a black male, a black male was killed in the city, and then there was riots. The police stood down. 
The police the town we search these cities we search these cities like uh St. Louis and Baltimore and, and sometimes in New York when they have riots in these places, the police stand down and you can see how the crime increases. This is what defunding the police look like. Black male terrorists will be terrorizing black women. Do you understand? Black women, do you understand? Do you hear do you hear me? Black women are going to be terrorized in these cities. And you need to start preparing yourself to get the fuck out. To get the fuck out. Black women naturally vet and are more selective with white people, right? And um, you know, I'm 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 not never gonna say that um that um uh you know racism is not an issue, especially uh, microaggressions. You know, I I in my work I work with white people. I work uh, I work in nursing, so I work with a lot of you know white women. Um, and the microaggressions in the workplace with white with Becky is, you know, just annoying as fuck. And uh, you know, you know, I understand, you know, how racism affects us in the workplace and how it affects us, you know, and life in general, but it is still nothing compared to black male terrorism. Nothing compares to black male terrorism. That that white man, that white supremacy spook that's at the door, he's sitting outside of the door. He's sitting outside of the door, right? White supremacy or, or whatever you want to call it, the white the white the white spook at the door or whatever it is, um the the institution of racism and, and and that we are always talking about as a black collective and how it affects us and how Lakeisha's are not being hired because their name is Laquisha, you know, watermelon water watermelon Drea can't get a job. But guess what? Watermelon Drea before she even got outside of her house to realize that she could not get a job, she had been molested at four. Black males had already started destroying her at four, and Lord forbid she be dark skinned. Because before, because before she got molested, she was already taught that she was black and ugly by her own mother, by her own mother. The destruction of black women starts at home, at home before we even ex experience, you know, the systematic racism that everybody tells us about. We are destroyed at home. The trauma begins there. The, half of the work is done before I even left my door. Half of the work is done before we even left our door. And how I know this is because when my daughter started going to public schools, I didn't raise my daughter on colorism. We did not do colorism in my home. My family did not do colorism. So I I am a brown-skinned woman raising a dark-skinned daughter, and you, we had never done colorism, so it wasn't even a thing. My daughter had no idea that there was a difference between her being a dark-skinned girl and a light-skinned girl until she went to school and your fucking children that you taught, that you all taught, tried to destroy her. That black is staying raised, those children that black is staying raised, my five-year-old daughter, she went to school and they tried to destroy her. She had no idea. She, she, she never even experienced colorism or, you know, the shit that you, you guys teach your children. She never even experienced that until she went out into school and she learned that shit on the fucking schoolyard. Before, before she got out into the world of, you know, racism and colorism and, and this, this system that's going to try to destroy her. Before it could try to destroy her, your children tried to destroy her in the fucking schoolyard. And even then she was lucky because most of those children that tried to destroy her on the schoolyard, they had already been, de they were destroyed before they even got to school. A 60% uh, molestation rate or a sexual assault rate for black girls before they reach the age of 18, and that's a fucking lie. And that's a fucking lie. And y'all know it. 60% is a fucking lie. Y'all know it's at 70. At least 70%, and I say 80. I say 80% of black girls are sexually assaulted 
before the age of 18, but it's documented at 60%. So that means every time you see two little black girls, one of them has been sexually assaulted. It's fucking disgusting in Blackistan. And it's a stupid question when I say to my friends, like, we have to leave. We can't stay in where we live at. We can't stay here anymore. We have got to flee Blackistan. And I tell them that I am, I, of all of my friends, and I'm a black woman, so all, all of my friends are black women, of all of the women that I know, I am the only one that was not molested. So I'm sitting here telling black women that we need to flee. We need to get out of here. This shit is it's, it's mad here. We got to go. We got to figure, uh, figure our escape plan. These are women who have been molested, who have been assaulted, who have been directly harmed by black skin, and they will ask me why. What the fuck do you mean why? I had one child and I raised her. Damn, you killed me. I ain't never, never going to let y'all think that shit was easy. You know, I'm never going to lie to black women and black girls and say that shit was easy. That shit damn near killed me. But they had two and three and four. And my best friend, my best friend is a mother of eight children. We're the same age, 33 years old, she has eight children. Luckily, that friendship has severed, so I don't even have to think about that bullshit once I flee black or stand. You know, you know once, once it's time to go, I don't even have to think about that bullshit that that, that, that friendship created. When I get ready to flee this motherfucker, but I'm telling black women it's time to go. And baby, this is a this is a a sinking ship, and it's time to fucking go. I'm telling black women that I'm screaming it from rooftops, and they asking me why. They these are these are women that have been abused since they fucking open up their eyes, and they asking me why. What? What? Are you serious? I, I even want to become harsh in my language. Like, are you fucking dumb? Are you fucking dumb? Because everywhere in Blackistan you look, you, you are being hated. That's why. Because because as soon as you came from your mother's womb, she hated you. That's why. She let males move into your home and molest you, and, and that's why. Because of her hate and hurt and, and the fact that she didn't care about you. That is why we have to go. That is why we have to go. Because from, from, from coming from her womb, she never even took the responsibility to properly raise you, to properly protect you, to choose a decent father for you. Since you took your first breath, you have been hated and black as sin, and it's time to go, sis. Why do you want to stay where you're not appreciated? It makes no fucking sense to me. It is time to divest black women. It is time to go. It is time to let. It is time to leave the fucking dusties in the fucking hood for the mammies and the picnics and get your ass gone. You look around. You you figure out how much money you make a year. Black women are the fucking breadwinners in the community, so I know that y'all making a little bit of, a little bit of change. I know that y'all making a little bit of change. You need to figure out in what communities which are safer that you can move in and still thrive. You need to figure out what do you need to do as far as bettering your education to put you in a better position for you to live outside of Blackistan. And you need to start doing that shit like yesterday. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You need to start working on fleeing Blackistan yesterday. You are a fucking day short. You are day short. You 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 should have started this plan. You should have started this plan uh, yesterday, sis. But you hear me today. You need to start figuring out how do you plan to get out of this. Do you understand me, honey? It's time to go. It, it's it's a moment alone. It's a moment alone. A moment of safety. A moment. A moment to to fucking breathe. Um, when I realized, when it settled in my heart that this is, that fleeing Blackistan is my next step, and everything that I do in 2021 is getting me prepared to not be here by the end of 2021, I wept. I wept at the thought of freedom. 
At the thought of finally being sovereign, I wept. That sovereign queen that lives within all of us that comes and swoops us up and saves us, she's been saving us. Since we came from our mother's womb and our mother has hated us and has allowed Blackistan to abuse us day in and day out, that sovereign queen that lives within us, she wept. Finally. Praying, finally you get it. It's time to go. What tears of joy when I realize the freedom that I'm about to embark on. Black women, free yourselves of Blackistan. This is not your responsibility. Take that fucking cape off and light that bitch on fire. Do you understand me? Take that fucking cape off and light that bitch on fire. And and when you think of, and, and when I thought about it, oh oh the indoctrination, the the thoughts of uh you know white supremacy and you know the systematic racism and whoop de whoop the whoop the whoop 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 all that shit came into my mind and I I tallied it up, I tallied it up. See because I've always worked in white neighborhoods because they paid more, duh. So I always worked in white neighborhoods. I, in my whole life, I figured I figured out that it it would to 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 drive an extra ten fucking minutes. I made fucking three and four dollars more an hour. So I already started. I've already been working with white people, you know. So I'm used to Becky's microaggressions. That's nothing to me. That's how I make my money, bitch. That's how I make my money. I come up in this motherfucker. I get my fucking medicine cart together, and, and 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 Becky and Becky goes and reports that my motherfucking scrubs too tight. Okay, so so you know I have you know that's no fucking problem for me. That's no fucking problem for me. I got this down pat. I I got how to deal with that down pat, and that has still not harmed me in the way that Blackistan has. And if you and if you really sit and think about it, those of us who deal with non black people, you you have maneuver ways, you have figured out how to work this. We we work with them. We work with them. We know. We know that microaggressions and 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 not saying and I'm and not for nothing that I'm saying that, you know, white males are not um, you know, harm harm harmful in how they hire, which I don't really believe. Which I which I really don't believe, and, and you know I don't believe it. But y'all telling me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna trust y'all word that you know that white males, because white males own the businesses and they hiring the people. You know that they, they not hiring watermelon Madrea because they hiring her. She working where I work at. When I go to work, when I get up and I go to work, all I say is Shanique was. Okay, all that's in there is Shanika's, uh, Lakeisha's, watermelon Andreas, because they work. Because they work. That's all that's that's all that is in the nursing homes that I work in. Because they work. And everybody knows that they work. Now do we have to deal with some microaggressions and, and you know, some, some bullshit in the workplace from Becky? Oh yes, we do. We do. We do. But it is not as harmful as going to the fucking bar, leaving leaving my job in the suburbs to make a little couple more dollars than I would in the city. Um, leaving my job in the suburbs and driving into the city to stop and get a bottle of wine, having a nigga mole me in the eye. Come on, come on, black women, you have got to start telling the truth about what it is to live in these fucking neighborhoods. It is it is it is fucking terrorizing. I have I have nieces when I when it's time to take them to the park. Y'all know how y'all live because we all live the same way. When it's time to take them to the park, we don't stay in the city. I drive them out to the counties. I drive them out into the into the counties where all the white people live at. So why the fuck I ain't been moved out there? Why the fuck I ain't been moved out there because I'm so I'm so scared of, of, of living next door to 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 a, a racist. <laughs> I'm I'm too scared to live next door to a racist. I'd rather stay inside a black and stand dodging fucking bullets. Are y'all fucking crazy? Are y'all fucking crazy? Are y'all fucking crazy? 
it's safer to live next to the motherfucking grand wizard of the fucking KKK than it is to live inside these inner cities. Especially where they are headed. Especially where they're headed. Because you want to know something? The grand wizard of the KKK, he wants a motherfucking write off of his job. He, he, his, his neighborhood is 90% white. 90% white, his employees are mostly white, and when your ass come up in there with your motherfucking credentials, he is happy to hire you to get a fucking tax write-off, because there's no Mexicans where he live at. Black women, if you do not get your ass with the fucking quickness up out of the black stand, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, because once I'm gone... Because once I leave Blackistan, I am not opening my door to anyone. I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now to build your fucking ark. I'm telling you now, build your fucking ark. Because once I'm gone, you're not going to be able to call me and try to come up on my ark. It is not enough room for you to come and bring a motherfucking Dusty. You're dumb. You're dumb. You need to start building your ark now, black women. It is time to go. It is time to go. You need to make a plan. You need to figure out where safer ground is for you. And you need to figure out a plan to get there. And if it's only a moment alone, just a moment of freedom, a moment of sovereignty, a moment of, you know, to breathe, a moment off of the stress of your heart, and you want to get to safety, you know, get secure there, uh, and circle back around into the, into the hood. You want to hurry your time in this shit, and you want to circle back around to the hood and try and pick up as many women as you can. That's on you. That's on you. But see, y'all got to hear my voice over the next year. Okay, you have to. While while I'm still in Blackistan, while I'm still up in here, up in this mix, you have to hear my voice now. This is my hurry your time and moment right now. Right now, you know, some black women will come back into the into the black community and try to save it because that's what we do. Um, we love to, we love to mule, you know. We love to try to save every fucking one, and you know, and some of us is not. <laughs> let me just say that, and let me just say that. But the first thing is self above all else. Get yourself to safer ground first. Figure out how you're going to get up out of this pile of shit called Blackistan. It's about to be a very fucking dangerous place around here. It already is dangerous as fuck. It's already dangerous as fuck. If you're living inside of an inner city, check it out. Look at how much, look at how the violence against women is just increasing year after year after year. It's getting fucking crazy. It is getting fucking crazy. Black women divest. Do you understand me? Divest. Get your ass out of Blackistan. Get your children out of Blackistan. Blackistan. <clears throat> Give your children a fighting fucking chance. I told you that black boys between the ages of 11 to 14... It's a it's a wrap. If if you don't if you don't do something by then, your son your son is going to become a terrorist. And I'm telling you that. Get his ass out of the city. Your daughters your daughters are fucking prey. And in the cities your daughters are prey. Get your children out of Blackistan. Do you understand me? Find your find and if if you don't have the financial means right now and you have to figure it out, put yourself on safer ground by being more vigilant and how you how you how you vet people who come around you. Don't even have nobody around your children. Like let's just make that clear. Let's just think, let's just order the same way that you vet non black people and you have this automatic thought in your mind that non black people are going to be a danger to you, you need to have that same thought around Mammies, pygmies, and males. These, these, I don't even, I don't even want to call them people. I'm, these demonic entities are, are, are trying to destroy your children. 
Do you understand me? They are trying to destroy your children. You need to figure out how you can, if you're going to stay in black and if you cannot flee, if you cannot figure out your way out right now, you need to figure out the safest way possible to not deal with black and to have yourself inside. Once the sun comes down, you ask me to be inside the house. Must the sun come down? Your ass need to be inside the house. You should have got, as a, listen, here, you have to wake up a couple, you have to wake up a couple, uh, 30 minutes earlier so you can stop at the, at the fucking liquor store on your way to work. Cause, cause guess what? Nick Nog's not up. Nick Nog's not up at 8 o'clock in the morning when you on your way to work, sis. On your fucking way to work, you need to get your bottle of wine, put that shit inside your trunk, and go to work. And that way, when you get off at when you get off at 4 p.m., the sun's still up. Get your ass inside your house. You don't need to stop in no motherfucking bars at, when the sun is down. When the sun is going down, you need to have your ass inside the house. If you if the, if the malls and in the inner cities are is the only place that you have to shop, you need to have your ass up and out and 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 there and and back home by the time the sun come down. When you have to go to the grocery store, you have to get your ass up, get your ass, get your groceries, and get your ass back home before the fucking sun go down. This this place is dangerous. This is the new sundown town. If your ass is caught outside at the dark, your ass could be dead. Do you understand me, black women? Do you understand me? Now is the time to divest. Now is the time to to completely separate yourself from mammies, from mammies and pick me's. Because mammies will throw your ass up to the slaughter and pick me's as well. Will both throw your ass up to the slaughter. For, mammies for the black community and pick me's for black dick. Do you understand? These bitches will have you fucking deaded. Stop dating their stop dating their men. Stop devil you ain't sharing no men with them. They can't get mad at you because you don't date those men. Those are not the kind of men that you date. So you ain't got to worry about no fucking mammy setting you up, no pick me setting you up because you're not competing with them against these fucking nignogs. Y'all can have them. I don't date them. I don't date them, so y'all don't ever have to argue with me about them. Y'all don't ever have to have no beef with me about them. Y'all don't have to set me up, you know, put crack inside my weed. You know, I, I, I live in the hood. I hear all kinds of crazy stories about black women who have been set up by pick and and um, mammies, you know, to be fucked over over niggas. No, I don't date them. I don't date them. They are all yours. You do not have to beef with me over no nigga, sis. Trust me. They all yours. I want you. I want you to have the best. I want you to. I want you to have the best of them. You, you know what I'm saying? So I'm out. I'm out. I'm not even. They not even in my scope. They not even in my scope. So you don't have no beef with these mammies that's killing these mammies and these picnies that's killing each other over males, fighting each other all in the street over males, like all that shit. All that shit come from dating black males, and you, you, once you divest, you don't want to deal with that any fucking way. Your ass need to be home before dark. You don't hang, you don't, um, hang out with picnies and, and mammies. You don't date the same men as them. You need to put yourself in the best position to avoid them at all costs. You need to figure out other ways to, um, other people and other ways to have your, um, children be taken care of while you're at work. You need to figure out, um, Mentorship programs with real mentors, not fucking hood rich niggas. No, real fucking non black male entrepreneurs. Because there ain't no black male entrepreneurs in the hood anyway, because once they make a little bit of money, they get out the hood. <laughs> so, you know, you ain't even have to think about that. You need to start having your children um, be a little bit more cultured. That was that was something that that was something that even when I couldn't afford, I, I spent a little bit of extra money to make sure my daughter could know a little bit of something outside of the the inner city that we lived in. Sisters, you have got to understand that this is about to be a very dangerous place, and you have to start figuring out your exit. 
now everyone, every black woman who is hearing my voice should be trying to figure out her exit from Blackistan if she has not already exited. You need to come out with your plan. Then you need to figure out the safest way to get through life in Blackistan until you can get out. Do you understand me? This is really, you know, for your best. This is this is a divesting from everyone who wants to use you as a mule. You have to be very vigilant. Very vigilant in Blackistan. Do I even can I get your gas listen, get your gas on your lunch break. Take your lunch break, go get your gas, go get your bottle of wine. It's fucking twelve noon. Nick Nog still sleep. They don't fucking get up till two PM. They don't get up to start terrorizing till two PM. And not only that, if you work outside and most of us got sense enough to work outside of um the um inner cities because it's more money outside of the inner cities. If you work outside of the inner cities, go and sh and do your grocery shopping. When you get off of work at four p.m., go do your grocery shopping. Don't even go home and change your fucking clothes. Go do your grocery shopping. Do everything you must do before it's time to eat before the sun start going down. If you gotta pick something up, if you gotta pick something up from the grocery store, you know, some milk and some eggs and a, a, a pound of ground beef for dinner. Take your lunch break and go get you go to the market down the street from your job and get you some milk, eggs, and some ground beef and put that shit inside the work refrigerator until it's time to get off. Once the once once the street lights come on, your ass need to be in the house. Your children need to be in the house. And and that's my commentary on a moment alone. Divest divest black women. It is time to go baby this is a sinking ship this is a sinking ship get your ass off of it